All right, back here with Captain Marty. We're going to hear another one of his great stories. Captain Marty, how the heck are you today? I am doing good, Justin. I hope you are doing the same. I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I can't complain too much. I got a few aches and pains, you know, from because we're both, you know, gym rats now. You know, I'm more of a gym sloth. No. <laughs> but you know, a lot of these these exercises we do, like my my elbows, my shoulders, my knees, my ankles, kind of achy. So you know, I, I can oh, never hurt you too bad. Give though. it a few years. Okay, okay. Well, what, what kind of story we got today? I think we'll tell. I love you know. I love my first aid at sea stories. Yes. Um, I want to tell you a story about uh, a fish that literally jumped in the boat, and I ended up. Needing the first aid, I'll be right back to do it. Hey, y'all, Captain Marty here to tell you that when my friends are in the market for a new boat engine repair or repower, I send them to the best in the business, and that's at Ratcliffe Marine in Bellhaven. Ratcliffe Marine is your official Honda outboard dealer. Honda motors are designed to get you on the water fast and get you back to the dock safely and quickly. Ratcliffe Marine is best known as the largest repower center in North Carolina. So when you're in the market for a new motor or you need your Honda service, go to Ratcliffe Marine, 865 Highway 264 Bellhaven. Ahoy there, folks. Captain Edward Lee here, and I want to invite you aboard the Miss Oregon Inlet 2. She's a modern 60-foot head boat outfitted with the latest top quality safety and fishing equipment. We make three trips per day out of the world-famous Oregon Inlet Fishing Center. Visit MissOregonInlet.com or call us today at 252-251-4314. So ditch the beach for a bit and set sail with the Miss Oregon Inlet 2. So, Justin, many years ago, I tell a lot of stories about my first charter boat job at Oregon Inlet. Fishing with Nevin Westcott on the Sundancer, a boat that Billy Holton built. It was the only black hulled boat the fleet has ever had. Okay. And I loved it. You know, it's kind of unique. And uh, Nevin had a lot at stake, a boat payment mainly, a new boat, you know, some young kids. And, man, he was pushing. In fact, that summer, we went 74 days in a row. Wow. And that is a lot of days offshore. On the last day of that whole adventure, um, I was leaning on the back of the fighting chair standing up so tired that I fell asleep standing up. Holy smokes. And fell out in a pile, hit my chin on the back of the fighting chair. That's not why I needed first aid, but yeah, but we had a lot going on. We had to make our days. And right in the middle of that run, it was a beautiful August day. There was a little bit of a white marlin bite going on. We were in a group of 15 or 20 boats fishing in a particular area. And Mike Kelly, you know Mike Kelly from the restaurant fame. Oh, Mike Kelly at Kelly's Out of Banks Restaurant and Tavern. Yeah, yeah, and Mike was our uh, charter, him and some friends that day. In early afternoon, that actually it was late morning, it was before lunchtime, I remember that, we hooked a white marlin on a double hook squid. Now the squid, most of these dang whippersnapper mates today wouldn't even know how to rig a double hook squid. <laughs> uh, but we... You had to pull the hooks up through the a body of a squid that you went and got yourself from off the docks and launches in February. Stayed up all night long to pick them off the cull tables. It was a process mm. that mates don't do nowadays. But I had, had a white marlin. on. We were excited. Two hooks in the squid, one in front of the other. So the back hook is in the white marlin's jaw, and the front hook is not in anything except the squid. It's just dangling out in front of the back hook. So we get the fish out there. I get the leader, and it's a steel leader. In those days, we use is actually piano wire. Okay. So we use, but once you get hold of the leader, it's an official. Rele- we're going to release it. So I'm holding the leader, which is 15 feet long, and we're allowing everyone to come over to the side of the boat and take pictures. You know, before we cut the leader and let the fish go. And uh, they got their pictures, and they step back out of the way, and I. Uh, get my pliers out to cut the leader. And right at that moment, the white marlin decides to jump while he's on the end of that tether, which is a short leader, and he jumps in the boat. Seven feet long, 60-pound white marlin. And as he's coming over the side, first of all, he's got a spear on the front of him. Mm -hmm. So as he's coming over, I lean out of the way. Like, I I couldn't lean very far. I was at the stern of the boat. Right. And he comes over my right shoulder and just missed spearing me but as he went by my knee that front hook that was outside of the white marlin's mouth snagged me in the kneecap oh gosh and it was a pretty good size hook too it's a 10-aught hook so instantly that hurt 
It didn't hurt. They never hurt going in. When the hook goes in, they go in so quick, you don't hardly know it. But when there's a seven-foot fish flopping around on the end of that hook, it hurts a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. So I did what any good mate would do. I picked up a short-handled scrub brush that was about three feet long, and I had to do something. I beat the fish to death. Uh, <laughs> Lord. Because, I, I mean, when you can't yeah, shoot you him, no. uh, you can let him flop around and bury that hook in your knee. You might lose the use of your leg. So anyway, uh, I took care of that part of it, cut the leader, and everybody's like got really quiet because there I am with a big marlin hook stuck out of my leg, you know. So Nevin's up on the bridge, and he had been lecturing me <laughs> a lot about being more careful, but I did nothing in that spell that I could have been any more careful. So he comes down, and he's like, gosh, that thing's all the way and way past the barb. I don't know what to do. And all he was thinking was, if I take him into the hospital, and we're going to have to forfeit the cost of the trip. And I'm going to, I mean, he was really pushing to make it every day. Right. So he got on the radio, on the VHF radio. I said, is there a doctor in the fleet? My mate's got a big hook stuck in his knee. So right close by us was a boat called the Sea Hag. Now, don't think big sport fishing boat. It was about a 40-foot fiberglass kind of almost a homemade boat that a, a doctor out of Moorhead City and it was called the Sea Hag. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Leroy Allen was a neurosurgeon um, and he would fish on the boat. He always fished by himself. He had the only boat I've ever seen that had controls on the main fighting chair where he could hook a marlin and sit in the chair and drive the boat while he fought the marlin. Which oh, wow. Cool. That's pretty rad. It was pretty neat. So he says, I'm right here. He says, I'm right near you. And Nevis, is there any way you can come over and take a look at it? It's calm, so we don't have to worry about that too much. And he said, yeah, I'll be right over. And so he did come over. And I'm going to tell you, I was plenty, pretty nervous. Who is this guy that's coming over going to jump onto our boat? I knew he was a doctor, but, uh, you know, you can imagine the thought. You're looking down at your leg, and you got a, a hook, a big hook sticking out of it. So anyway, he did come over. And I'll tell you what he did when he got there in just a moment. Red Drum Tackle in Buxton is the oldest complete tackle shop at Cape Hatteras. And being the closest tackle shop to Cape Point, Red Drum Tackle has been welcoming fishermen to Hatteras Island with a wide selection of bait and tackle, skilled custom rod builds, rod and reel repair, expert knowledge and information since 1974. Red Drum Tackle knows how, when, and where to fish. To acquire this fishing brain power, visit them online at reddrumtackle.com. Red Drum Tackle, the oldest complete tackle shop at Cape Hatteras and the closest to Cape Point in Buxton. This is this is a little bit like the rest of the story, like Paul Harvey did for so many years. Uh, you know? Yeah. So uh, he comes over. Doctor Leroy Allen comes over. He has a Fred Flintstone lunchbox, which was a converted into a, uh, a first aid <laughs> kit. You want know to talk about the gray yes. plastic one? Yes, of course. That all the construction workers would wear a real heavy duty. And yes. He comes over, and it was so calm, he was able to jump. We backed right up to him. He jumped right over on our boat, never had to swim over, never. We caught him when he landed on our boat. And, and he. And in the meantime, I'm sitting in the door going up into the cabin, into the salon with, uh -huh. my, with my feet out on the cockpit deck. And he comes over, and he looks at it and goes, ugh. When he said, ugh, then I really got nervous. I bet. Know? I'm like, oh, we're headed to the hospital. This, he's going to say, I'm not touching that. But he says, well, lay down. I'm like, lay down. So I laid back on the floor of the cabin with my feet out in the cockpit, which is the fishing area of the boat. Right. He looks and he's digging around in his case. He comes out with a, a needle, a hypodermic syringe. And he's, I'm going to numb it up a little bit. And I don't know what was in the needle, but it numbed it up a little bit. He shot that in there and instantly, my I couldn't feel my feet. You know, Holy he smokes. really numbed it up. And then he said, all right, now just keep looking at the ceiling. Don't look back here. Anyway, out in the middle of the ocean... He had a scaffold in this. He's a he's a neurosurgeon. Yeah, you know? yeah. He probably used it for cutting bait, knowing him. But <laughs> he makes a pretty good cut in my leg, and I heard the hook plink off the deck, fall on the deck. But I did not. I looked. I didn't realize how big a cut he put in my leg. He put seven stitches in it right there in the middle of the ocean. Of course, Nevin. He was not worried about me. He was just thrilled that he didn't take the charter back right. to the dock. Yeah. And however we were going to do it, we were going to finish that day of fishing so he would, he and I would get paid. So we thank Dr. Leroy Allen profusely 
And we, his boat, meanwhile, by the way, is just drifted in the Gulf Stream with nobody on it, you know. And we back over there to him and put him back on his boat. And we're like, I, I stood, I said, can I stand on? He said, you can, but my leg was still numb. So I had to hang on to something. But we actually got the bait set back out and finished our day's fishing. So now the footnote to the story is that wasn't just any neurosurgeon that came and cut the hook out of my leg in the middle of the ocean on a boat he was fishing on by himself. Dr. Leroy Allen did his residency in Dallas, Texas, and he was one of the surgeons that tried to save the life of President John F. Kennedy when he was assassinated. I just read a book, a big book about neurosurgery. It's a, a book called Gray Matters. And there's a story in that book about what happened when Kennedy was shot and the team of neurosurgeons that tried uh, mm-hmm. hopelessly to save his life. And that was the same guy that cut the hook out of my leg out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So that's my story for you. And we all live to fish another day. That's, that's awesome. 